Hey everybody, welcome back. These are some embarrassing TikToks that you should have taken to the grave. You should not have shared this on social media, but you did, and that's why we're here. Well, it's been fun. It's been really fun getting to know you all. Oh, I love I her. I to inform you that Teresa Rowley has passed away. She's left the building. I did the most embarrassing thing that I've ever done in my entire life last night. And if you know me at all, or you've followed me for any amount of time, you know that that's really saying something, okay? I moved recently. We all know this. I met a landlord that I hated, created a grudge, dropped the grudge, picked the grudge back up. Now here I am. I'm in my new house. I'm incredibly happy. But I had to go back to my old apartment for the last time last night. I had to pick up one singular item. Damn that item. I go. I get the item. I, I lock the key to my apartment for the very last time. I turn, I have a little full house moment. I go, <laughs> oh, the memories. <sighs> I'm walking to my car and who do I run into? But my sweet, gorgeous, wonderful little neighbor, we'll call her Susan and her little dog, Puppy. Okay, we're creative with names. <laughs> Susan and Puppy have been wonderful neighbors to me, dare I say friends. When I first moved into that apartment, I was dating a man who was a uh, piece of <laughs> and I had bought a couch off of Facebook Marketplace and it was in big boxes in the back of my Honda Pilot, okay? Too big and cumbersome for me to move in myself. He told me that he would take me to dinner and then he would help me bring the boxes into my apartment and set up my couch. I said, great, sounds like a good time. We go to dinner, we're sitting at the bar when all of a sudden one of his girlfriends, platonic girlfriends, walks in, sits at the bar next to us. She starts she laughing, touching his hair. She goes, thanks for inviting me. I said, thank who, who invited you? What? I played it cool because I was chill back then. I have no chill anymore. Okay? I would <laughs> yoink his dick off if that happened to me today. But anyway, we leave the restaurant. I, I say to him, I say, hey, it kind of seems like that girl is into you. He lost it. Okay. Red flag number 5,962. He leaves me in the middle of the street. I said, hey, what about my couch? He goes, your couch. Okay. Okay, cool. Go, go. So I go. I'm trying to pull my couch in by myself. Okay. I'm crying. I'm emotional. I'm feeling incredibly vulnerable alone. When all of a sudden I hear Susan, whom I had never met, come up next to me and she goes, Do you need some help? Aww. So ginger, so maternal, so <laughs> wonderful. She's about yay high. She's tiny. Strongest woman I've ever seen. She she brings all these boxes out of the back of my car into my apartment, helps me set up my couch. It was such a sweet, angelic moment, truly. Cut to last night. That was two years ago, okay? I'm leaving my apartment for the last time. Who do I run into in the parking lot but Susan and Puppy? I go, oh my gosh, Susan, I'm leaving. I'm so glad I ran into you. She gives me a hug. She goes, you were just so sweet. I say, you were so sweet. Thank you for my couch that one time. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so she hugs me. I say, yeah, we'll stay in touch. We'll stay in touch. Sweet hug. Then we start to pull away from the hug, but she doesn't pull away entirely. She holds on. In fact, she, her face kind of gets closer to mine. And I was, I was confused. And so I didn't quite know what to do. And I panicked and I kissed her on the lips. I kissed her on the lips. I kissed her. What? 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 On the lips. Because she's European and her, her face was getting closer to mine. And I thought maybe that's what Europeans do what they want you to do. But turns out it wasn't. Oh. Okay? It wasn't. Turns out Puppy was just gallivanting in the space behind me on his leash, and Susan had to lean in to change hands with the leash so he could be free, oh. and not entangle himself in the bonds of our love. But I kissed her. <laughs> she goes, oh. <laughs> and like, oh. And she goes, thank you. <laughs> Poor Susan. <laughs> she can help you move more than just your couch, honey. Is that. That's not a good joke, Charlotte. <laughs> it's safe to say that you guys are not gonna keep in touch. Like, I'm just telling you right now, she, she's not gonna call. Thank you, but no. Thank, thank you, but no. I was just being nice. That was not, I was not sorry for leading you on. No, 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 no. You kiss her on the lips, you kiss her on the lips. God, this girl is like one of the best storytellers I've ever heard in my life. Honestly, after such a nice thing for her to do, I'd probably want to kiss her on the lips as well. Just a platonic kiss on the lips. Why is it? sus to kiss three times on the cheek like some Europeans do, but not just a nice little smooch, you know? Nice little smooch. Why does that cross a line? <laughs> I'd smooch everybody if I could. I'm only saying this because I feel bad for you and that's super embarrassing, especially because you didn't want to kiss her on the lips. You just, you were like, oh, you were so nice. So like, I'm gonna, oh, you're kind of, okay, sure, yes. <laughs> 
You poor thing. Everybody go follow this girl. Honestly, hilarious. You are either never, ever going to hear from Susan again or she's moving in. <laughs> Susan! Hopefully she saw your TikTok and y'all can be besties. You don't meet too many neighbors out there that are willing to help you move your couch into your house, okay? When you're single, dang, it's hard to find someone, move your couch, move your furniture, do nice things for you around the house. When I was single, I would literally just like give cash to people because I didn't want to, because I lived in like a two level loft and I needed like everything that was like, you know, couch related, living room related was on the second floor. So I needed people to help me put it up the stairs, but I didn't have a boyfriend. So that just kind of resulted in me like kind of giving money to people just to, <laughs> so that I wouldn't have to do it. Like I'd give them money and I would also help. Like that's how badly I needed it. Please, please just help me. This is honestly how I got so good at fixing things because I was single for so long. So like I learned how to use a drill and it helped me in the end. I had a, did a drill in the other day. I did a, a wee drilling the other day and Mike was like, since when can you do that? I'm like, mm. I'm a handy. I'm a handy gal. I gave my cousin and his wife a pineapple at a housewarming no. party several years no, ago. No, no, I didn't have a lot of money at the time. But I also didn't want to show up empty handed. And I thought a pineapple is the perfect no. gift because it's cheap, it's comedic, and it's also a refreshing snack. So when I showed up at the housewarming party, I said, hi, thank you for having me. I brought you guys a pineapple. And my cousin's wife said, oh, um, we're not really doing gifts. And I said, well, it's barely a gift. It's just a piece of produce. And she said, no, thank you. And I said, Oh, is somebody in the family allergic? And she said, no, we just don't want a pineapple. And I was like, huh, rude. But I didn't say that. I just set it down at the little table next to the entrance. And I went and attempted next to, to the mingle entrance. at the party. And I was trying to mingle with these people. No. They were all strangers. I didn't know anybody except my cousin and his wife and my other cousins. And I was just thinking, why didn't she want the pineapple? Why was she so cold about it? She's normally so cool, but she was kind of mean. And if somebody gave me a pineapple and I didn't want it, there are so many things you could do with it. She could compost it at the very least, or she could re-gift it. It looks like she invited all her church friends. Why doesn't she oh! just give it to one of them? Not well, the church friends. Before I left that I was just going to accidentally on purpose forget the pineapple. So I walked out the door and I forgot to grab it off of the little table near the entrance of the house. And when I was halfway down the driveway, do you need me to turn on the AC, buddy? When I was halfway down the driveway, she came running up to me. She chased me out of the house with the pineapple. And she said, don't forget your pineapple. You can chop it up and eat it at home. And I was like, I will chop it up and eat it at home. Because I, unlike you, am a fan of delicious flavor. I was so befuddled by this whole situation that I made a TikTok story that has since been deleted because people in the comments were calling my cousin's wife some mean names. And I told the story of the pineapple. A few weeks later, I was at work and my coworker said, hey, I noticed you were on TikTok. And I said, oh, that's embarrassing. Thing. And he said, no, you're really funny. The pineapple story was really funny. And I said, can I be honest with you? That video got half a million views. And I know I put it on the internet for everybody to watch, but I don't understand why it got half a million views. I didn't think it was that funny. And he said, do, do you not read your comments? And I said, oh no, I love myself. I never read the comments. And he said, you might want to start. And that's when my coworker explained to me that giving somebody a pineapple as a gift can mean that you like them and wish them well, or it can mean that you really like them. And I thought, well, that would explain a lot. That might be why I haven't heard from that side of the family since the pineapple incident. Coincidentally, I was uninvited from a wedding directly after the pineapple incident. And to this day, there's this part of me that's like did she did this happen all over a pineapple was this just because she misunderstood my gift it was also not the first time i brought somebody a pineapple <laughs> as a gift and i couldn't afford to bring them a nicer gift so i've stopped doing that i've stopped showing up at people's houses with pineapples i think i'm gonna switch to watermelons if that doesn't have a double better menu. better yeah better better you left it at the front Girl. Okay, all right, she didn't really explain it. It's not just, oh yeah, someone like likes you, likes you. It's like, I'm Barb and you know Bob. Hello. Welcome to our love den. Well, clothing is optional. But stuffing is not. Oh! <laughs> I hope you're hungry. Barb's breasts are out of this world. Oh, Bob. You know I'm right. You're a swinger. It's actually an upside down pineapple. Pineapples on cruise ships and on land are used as a secret symbol for swingers to identify each other. A pineapple badge, piece of clothing, or stuck on someone's door can mean they're looking for a partner swap or using it as an invitation to a swinger party. Barb, by the way. And I'm Bob. Welcome to our love boat. 
ooh, ooh. <laughs> Our clothing is optional. But fun is not. It's the church friends for me. It's like, <laughs> she thought you wanted to do a little swappity swap, a switchity switch. I've never heard of this pineapple meeting before. I'd just take the pineapple. I mean, you could take the pineapple, but everyone might think it means something. I honestly didn't know about the pineapple thing until very recently. Like, you know when me and Mike started doing those Barb and Bob sketches? Oh, that hot dog was so big, I'm sweating. I can't believe I finished that fast. Yeah, that's when I was gifted with the knowledge. Pineapple is used in hospitality. Upside down pineapple is a different story. Okay. Dang, all of this like fruit jargon that I had no idea about. All this fruit metaphors. Oh my goodness. Can't we just eat a fruit and be done with it? Okay, I had my biggest date fail yesterday. <laughs> So I, <laughs> I can't even finish this. So I'm meeting up with this guy for drinks and this is like our first date. We've never really talked or anything. So we sit down and the first drink I get is an Aperol spritz and there's a straw and I'm drinking out of the straw and we're chit chatting. <laughs> and he's <laughs> triggered. So he says something really funny and I like leaned back. And when I came back forward, <laughs> My nose, the straw, the straw went straight up my no. nose. <laughs> but when I came up, it was still stuck in my nose. <laughs> but the most crazy part is I tried to like play it off. Meanwhile, this straw is sticking out of my nose. And I like pulled it out. And he's like, did that just happen? And I was like, awkwardly be like, so I'm obviously not using the straw anymore. <laughs> Why not? Kid, who cares? I couldn't get away from it. <laughs> so I'm just like putting the straw down, starting to drink my drink without it. <laughs> How did it so perfectly go in my nose? Not even hitting any spot. I have a small nose and it went straight up my nose, but stuck in there and came back Ow. up with my <laughs> Okay, so please tell me there was a second date, Bestie, please. I love a good overshare. I love an overshare. Why not? That's what social media is for. Let's all embarrass ourselves for fun on the internet. Why not? It's not like we have jobs. It's not like we have children that will someday see it. It's not like our parents are probably learning how to use social media. Who cares? If anybody ever asks you, it's satire. I went on a date recently with a guy and he was like, oh, what are your hobbies? Word of advice to the girlies. If a guy asks you, what are your hobbies? Please, please don't tell him a hobby that you recently started that you're not good at. Because I just started drawing again and I was like, oh my God, he's gonna be so impressed. And I was like, actually, I uh, do art in my spare time. And we met at a coffee shop. So I had my iPad with me and he's like, oh my God, do you draw on your iPad? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, okay, well show me some of your work. Okay, um, let oh me God, find show us, good. show us, show us. Oh, there's um, there's this one. It's not finished yet. Oh God! Oh <laughs> yeah, I'm really good at like realistic portraits. Oh God! I don't know if you've heard, but hands are pretty oh, hard to draw. Oh wow! And you look at this. The most awkward part is he was just trying so hard to be nice and like really supportive, and he was like, "Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah, like I'm so awkward. This is why I'm single." Okay, I mean, listen, you got the foundation somewhat correct. Like I see that we're doing some like, oh God, the abs. <laughs> like I can kind of see the resemblance a little bit. Hey, at least he was supportive and he didn't tell you that you're absolute garbage. Does anyone remember that video that we looked at that was like, this girl showed a guy that she was dating that she could draw a circle, like a perfect circle. And he was like, so unimpressed by it. He was like, <laughs> He was, he was really, really putting her down about it. At least this guy was supportive. I mean, come on. Could have been worse. Actually, could have been worse. It's like when I tell people I sing and then I take the mic and I sound terrible. <laughs> I did that most recently and this girl was like, Oh, that was like mostly good. Dead, I have died, I have died. Here's the thing. We don't care if the drawing is good or not. We just care that you have a passion to do it. It all relates back to effort. I also feel like you could have said like, I'm actually like learning how to draw, but you also already knew how to draw. This is why it's always good to just stay humble and be like, oh yeah, I sing sometimes. Like, yeah, I like singing instead of just like, oh, I have um, all this experience, blah, blah, blah. And then people will have expectations, right? Under promise, over deliver, you know? Reminds me of when a girl I dated said she baked, so I asked her to bake me something and they were the worst cookies I've had in my life. 
<laughs> yeah. Word of advice to Gurley. If that was his reaction, give him a second date. I'm serious though. Like he was supportive even though your drawings are horrendous. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're learning. You're learning again. You're picking it up again. It's not going to be like a... Hills and mountains, hills and mountains. It's not going to be an easy thing to learn how to draw. It's not. But the fact that he was supportive is a very good sign. Things our exes did, but we still stayed. We can't laugh, though. When my Nana passed away and he couldn't answer the phone because he was out with the guys and the bar was too loud. On the one night I stayed with my parents, he went out and got and then posted pictures with a group of only women. When he walked into the gym and saw me wearing a Lululemon tank top and then completely ignored me, turned around, didn't talk to me for the rest of the day because it was too scandalous. He picked up my favorite stuffed unicorn and threw her against the floor as hard as he could. <laughs> when the first date he took me on was to a concert, but when I got kicked out for being underage, he stayed and watched the rest of the concert by himself and ditched me in the city. He was getting popcorn everywhere, and I said, you're right over my slippers, don't get butter on them. And then he proceeded to get butter all over my slippers. <laughs> Sorry. When, when he would answer phone calls and texts from another girl while we were mid um, shenanigans. Oh my god. When he would say, hey, look, it's George, and then say George Bush, and then push me into a bush, but sometimes it was just a tiny bush in a big patch of dirt. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Not even That's not funny. <laughs> when, when he went to a party and said I wasn't allowed to come, so I went to my friend's house, and then he showed up at my friend's house to take me home because they can't have friends. When I said how much I love my cat, and he said he was going to pick it up and punt it across the room. That's like a sin. <laughs> That's like not even <laughs> Honestly, every time I watch these videos, I'm like... The fact that you can actually list off at least 10 of these, oh my goodness. But hey, I feel like we were all young and inexperienced and in love. And it's like, um, I'm just gonna ignore that very blatant disrespect. Cause I'd rather be disrespected and be in a relationship than be single. Been there, been there. I'd like to think that I would only let two or three indiscretions slide, especially at like, you know, in, in my younger years, I would like to think that, but like, dang, we did let a lot of things slide, didn't we? I don't know why we would have stayed in those situations. Even now it's like, bye. No, literally looking back, it just makes me cringe. The self-worth just wasn't there yet for me. Yeah, and just naivety. Wait, I don't get it. Why would you do that? Like it hasn't set in that they're horrible people yet. Cause it's like, you're not a horrible person. So you wouldn't assume that they're horrible people, right? We haven't met enough horrible people to know that there's horrible people out there. Just give it a little time. Give it a little time. You'll, you'll be jaded just like me. But hey, you don't need to be friends with everybody. There are some good ones out there. And most of them watch this channel. Is your tail wagging? You know when you go to class and you open up your laptop and everyone behind you can see what's on your screen? So before you go to class, you got to make sure all your tabs are closed just in case you have something that you shouldn't up on your computer. Uh -huh. I didn't do that. And it was devastating. I was sitting in class when the professor asked us to take out our laptops to take notes. So I did. And at first, everything was normal. I had a bunch of tabs open and nothing that I could see was that explicit or inappropriate. So I was like, all right, I'm fine. And I opened a Google Doc to take notes. I'm listening to the professor and taking notes and I start hearing something. It's really quiet at first, so I can't quite make out what it is but I just assume that it's coming from someone else's laptop. Update. Autoplay. I continue to hear the oh, noise, no. but I still couldn't make out what no. it was because I couldn't hear it over the lecture. My professor then played a video in class and I couldn't hear the sound at all over the video. So I kind of just forgot about it. That's until the video stopped. As soon as the video stopped, I heard, and I quote, are you lost, baby girl? At that point, I should have made the connection that the sound was coming from me, but I didn't. I just thought some random student was trolling the class. The entire class heard the are you lost, baby girl, and we all just started cracking. Wait, up. But as soon as wait. we started quieting down, we started hearing more noises. What noises? noises? Definitely do not belong no. in class. My professor chimes in, and he's just like, whoever's playing that, turn it off right now. But the sound did not stop. 
If anything, it got more intense. Some graphic audio. Oh. A couple uncomfortable moments later, the person sitting next to me taps me on the shoulder and he's just like, are you sure it's not coming from your laptop? I'm just like, oh, it's not coming from me. But I still check through my tabs. And bro, I had 365 playing on my laptop. What? And Wait. it was the worst scene to have playing in class. It could have been any other scene, but it had to be that one. Everyone behind me starts laughing because they can see the tab on my screen. I'm just like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I pause it. I kid you not. The professor's just like, Mark, do you want to share what you were watching with the class? I'm thinking to myself, oh God. I was just like, I don't know if I can share that with the class. My professor was just like, you know, it's forbidden to watch those sorts of videos during lecture. But I'll give you a pass this one time. Just don't do it again. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, God, he thinks I'm watching those videos, not 365. What Honestly, is 365? no difference. They're both very graphic. And for those of you wondering why I was watching that, I, I was bored. Don't judge me. Let this be a reminder. Close your tabs. Hang on a second. I just, I just doing research. 365, not now. What is it? What is 365? Oh, that looks, okay. Yes, that looks saucy, saucy. Polish erotic romance, okay. First in cinemas, then on Netflix, where viewers could indulge their most purient interests in private. Oh, best-selling novel inspired by Fifty Shades of Grey. Got it, that's all I needed to know. Okay, so now that we are uh, done with that, now that we all know what 365 is, I was once in class once. <laughs> This story is not gonna go how you think it's going. I was once in class once and you know, obviously we had a projector and it wasn't a student who had something sus on their computer. It was the professor. It was a tab that everyone could see on a giant projector. I'm pretty sure it was something very inappropriate like schoolgirls as well. Or like something really disgusting. Like I remember it being like, whoa, buddy. Okay, that, yeah, that, that's what you're into. <laughs> I won't say what professor, but like. This is your friendly reminder to close all your tabs. Some of you have like 8,000 of them open. Why do you do that? That's why your computer dies. That's why it's so slow. Close your tabs on your phone for sakes that's why your battery dies so fast all right cool i'm done talking goodbye subscribe